Jim Gray was actually calling the action on 15 and 16 for CBS Radio. And I've been told right now he is with Kenny Perry, so we will go down to Jim. All right, Kelly, thank you very much. Kenny, you've just finished all of your press. You've come off the course after a two-hole playoff. The disappointment that you must be feeling, can you describe it? Brings back a lot of bad memories. You know, it reminds me so much of the 96 at Valhalla. It's scary how it all turned out. Uh, take a lot from it, though. I, I felt good about myself and what I was doing out there. Uh, I was in control of my game through 16 holes, hit the greatest eight air in my life there on 16 to go two up. And then I skull that chip on 17. You know, it's it's a shot that's been killing me here the past year and a half, and uh, it's an easy pitch and run, but when I get that under the gun with the situation, my right hand gets away from me a little bit and I can't slow it down, and I, and I, I skull it. I hit it right in the belly. And uh, uh, But, you know, I'll take a lot from it. It's It'll sting, you know, we'll, we'll shed some tears over this next few weeks. Uh, but we'll, we'll have a lot of laughters, a lot of smiles, you know. Everything's a bonus in my career now, it really is. And uh, I take a lot, of, I'm just proud of how I hung in there. You know, I'm doing stuff you're not supposed to be doing, to tell you the truth. And uh, you know what, I, I'm just very blessed. I just thank God for giving me that opportunity. Let's talk about 17 and 18 in a moment. Can I take you back to 13 and the three putt? Because you could have yeah. given yourself that's, some distance there. Yeah, that's what they asked me in the press. What if you had one shot to take back? I, I said the first putt on 13. You know, I hit a beautiful five iron in there. I, I thought it would funnel off the side of that hill and get stay on the plateau, but it ran right up it and stayed up it. Uh, and I knew the putt. I knew this break, but I, I couldn't believe how fast it was. I just kind of got it rolling down the hill, and next thing you know, I've got an eight footer coming back straight up the hill, and I hit a poor putt there. I just it was a straight in right center. All I had to do was hit it, and I just kind of babied it. Very similar to the putt on the seventy second hole. That was the most disappointing to me. Was even though I played poorly, I, I, I gave myself a shot to win the tournament, and. Uh, it was a 20-footer. I've seen Tiger make it. I've seen Mark O'Meara make that putt. I knew the putt. I knew it broke just a little left. I said, just get it outside the edge there. Give it a little run. And, uh, man, it just came off so slow and so to the left. I just didn't even give it a chance. And uh, that was pretty disheartening. You've been very stoic throughout the week. And then you got to 16 and you hit what you describe as the shot of your life within just a couple of inches of a hole-in-one. And it's a birdie putt. You're walking down along the lake and I noticed that you waved to the crowd and you got a little choked up. Did you feel at that time that the tournament was yours and you were going to win? No, I never did. Uh, I knew how hard 17 and 18 are. Uh, they're great finishing holes. They've added all those trees up the right and the left now on 17. It's a very tight driving hole. Um, I feel, you know, I was never really comfortable setting up on that tee shot on that hole. So I knew I had a lot. And 18 is a dog leg right. And, you know, I hit it right to left. So that that's not in my wheelhouse either because it's always balls always wanting to go toward those bunkers over there. So I knew I had my hands full. And um, I was in the moment. You know, I was just thanking the gallery for their support. They were so good to me this week. They, they rooted for me so much. And I can't thank them enough uh, for their cheers of WKU or UK or Valhalla, Ryder Cup, USA. I mean, there was so much of that out there, it was incredible. Uh, so I, I drew a lot from that, and, you know, and I thank them for it. How much will you replay this, and, and will this haunt you? Yeah, you know, I still, I still haven't let the 96 PGA get away from me. You know, I, that's still with me, and uh, this will go with me too, so I can just add two, another one to it. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, like I said, if this is the worst thing that ever happens to me, my life's pretty good. You made an assessment that I think will shock a lot of people tomorrow. You said, you know, I'm a little bit better than average player. I'm not great, and I, and I realize that now within myself. Is that a tough conclusion for you to reach? Is, is, is that bother you? Well, because you said Tiger makes the big putts. Great yeah. players make those putts. Is, is that a tough assessment for you? No. Not everybody can be great. You know, we're, I'm just an average guy, and I'm happy to be it. Been an awful lot of fun to watch. A lot of people are feeling for you, Kenny. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. for your time. Most gracious and a difficult moment for Kenny Perry, and uh, it's got to be very difficult to handle, Kelly. Jim, thank you very much. What a telling interview. Always an extremely honest man, and of course, as it has been said time and time again, one of the nicest guys on the PGA Tour, if not the nicest, and you saw a glimpse of it right there. It was just really hard to watch what happened at 17 and 18, but 
everyone should be so happy for him. He's hard on himself, but so happy for him for the fact that he had a chance to become the oldest major champion in history. Well, we talked a lot about his age this week, and I think it is being 48 years old, almost 49 years old, that would allow him and will allow him to accept this and move on. He has other more personal pressing issues in his life. So Kenny Perry's a strong guy, and uh, he will deal with it.